Welcome to a video on learning Twine. In this video, I'm going to cover the story map. The story map is between the story list and the passage editor. It's the main view you see that shows the connection between passages currently shown and a story, the story map. It is also the main gateway into other functionality within Twine. We're not looking at the list of stories or editing those stories. When looking at an individual story, and its passages, you're looking at the story map. Down here at the bottom to start, at the menu on the bottom, looking from left to right, we'll start with, we could go back to the story list, we could look at the menu of options here, which will now open. Opening this gives you options in a number of different parts of the story. We can edit the story JavaScript, edit the story style sheet, change a story format, rename the story, select all passages, enable or disable snap to grid, view the story statistics, view the proofing copy that is the content of all the passages minus the content of the story JavaScript and story style sheet, or publish the file that is combine everything into an HTML file and prepare it for viewing. Moving across we have the quick find functionality. If we want to quickly find some text that is, that is within some passage in the story map, we can do that here. For example, I put the word frog in the passage to the end. As I started typing the word frog in the quick find functionality, it found it for me. The word frog is currently found in the passage labeled the end. And notice it's currently highlighted for me here. However, if I found if I wanted to find the frog and replace it with something, I could use the next functionality, find and replace across the entire story. Using this functionality, I can search for different texts, different strings, look for passage names, match case, use regular expressions, that is complex formulae for replacing or subtracting different things. I can then search for and replace it. In this case, I'm going to search for frog, which we know exists in the end, and replace it with nothing. I have now gotten rid, of, gotten rid of the word frog across all passages within the story. Now if we close this, go back to quick find, type in frog, we won't find it anymore because it has been replaced with nothing, an empty string. So moving away from quick find and the find and replace, we see three different options for organizing passages within the story map. The first of which is story structure. If I click on this, it will show us a smaller view, a, zo a zoomed out view of the different passages and their connections. In this case, you see the first with the launch icon showing that this is the beginning first passage that will be shown and is connected to another passage. That passage in turn is connected back to the first, and it shows us the story structure. Clicking on the next one and scrolling back up, we can look at passage titles. This doesn't show us the content or an excerpt of the passages anymore, and it doesn't just show us the story structure, but it shows us the name. In this case, the beginning with the launch icon showing us this, this will be the start passage and how it's connected to another passage, in this case the end. The beginning is connected to the end and showing us just the titles of the passages, the beginning and the end. Finally, in the last view, we see both the titles, the beginning and the end, as well as an excerpt of its content, in this case links to the end and the beginning and a link to the beginning and the end. We also see the connection between them. This combines, in a way, the three other views. We're looking at the story structure, we're looking at the passage titles, and we're looking at the titles and excerpts of them. However, for more complex projects, it may make more sense to look at its structure, or titles, or in this case, both, as a final thing here, as a more zoomed in view of this. The last three things on the bottom menu have to do with testing, playing, and adding new passages. If we wanted to test this current story, we could put it into test mode. Now depending on the story format, this will mean different things. For Harlow and for Sugarcube, 
This will mean a highlighting and different test modes. For Snowman, a possible story format that comes with Twine, too, it won't mean as much. But we can use a test mode to do different things and to carefully debug, that is test through, notice the little bug icon, our stories to see if anything might be wrong, as well as to catch changes in variables throughout the story. Playing the story, the next option, moving from left to right, allows us to simply play the current story using the current starting passage. In this case, a little launch icon tells us this is the beginning, this is the first passage, and moving through the story based on links or any other code that may be contained within. So we can test it using the test, we can play it using the play option, and finally we can add new passages. Just like adding a new story using the story list, the plus passage adds a new passage to the current story map. Clicking on it will then add an untitled passage to the current story map, unconnected to any other passage. To connect them, all we'd have to do is to go into any passage, change the content of that passage, and create a link to that new passage. But it would not be automatically linked, but just by adding it. Finally, and perhaps the most obvious, the story map shows, as I mentioned at the beginning, the connection between the different passages. So while we have this bottom menu and its options to do different things to the passages, we can also click and drag passages, in this case since they're both connected, move one back and forth, select them all as before and move them, or simply you leave them as they are. And if we had enabled snap to grid, they would be enabled to snap to different grid positions. For example, coming back to this menu and snapping to grid. And this would make it more grid-like and allow us to arrange things that way if we wanted. We can come back to this menu, turn snap to grid off, and move things around to our own liking. This has been an overview of the story map. Again, the story map is between the story list, the list of all the stories, and the passage editor, which is an editor for editing the content of passages. It is also the main view of what we're seeing when we're editing things, usually looking at passages, changing names, changing as I demonstrated content using quick find or find and replace, or looking at either the story structure, the passage titles, or a combination of the two as in the current default view. We can also test our story by clicking on the test link. We can play our story clicking on play, or we can just add new unconnected passages that don't already have links between them. We can also, of course, access the menu to change the story JavaScript, story style sheet, and a number of other different options, all enabled to us to do different things to the story while looking at its map view. Right here, looking at the story map. Thanks for watching.